9-11, terrorists attacked America. We lost innocent lives in a matter of hours. We lost the Twin Towers. We had an attack on the Pentagon where lives were lost there. And we also had an attempted attack on our president. America's bravest crossed the ocean and tracked down the enemy to keep Americans safe. Moms, dads, even teenagers joined the military, risking their lives to fight for the people of the United States of America. This is the war on terror, and these are the stories of America's heroes, the best of America inspiring the future of America. You're about to see a way of telling history that is completely different. I'm Staff Sergeant Shallow Harris, and I'm retired from the United States Army. And I'm Meredith Eiler, Chairman Emeritus of the charity HelpingAHero.org. Middle school and high school students are asking the questions, wanting to hear firsthand about fighting for freedom. You will hear what the United States of America means straight from some of our greatest heroes, including this great war hero right next to me. Thank you, Meredith. Hi, I'm Duncan Horner. I'm a 17-year-old senior, and I'm joined here with Staff Sergeant Shiloh Harris and his 11-year-old son, Glenn. When did you decide that I want to be in the military, I want to fight for this country? I decided to join after 9-11-2001. You probably don't remember that. You might have been too young, because this is our 20th year anniversary. In fact, you weren't even born at that time, right? Was not. I hope I live. I hope I live. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I joined because our nation was attacked in one of the worst attacks in history. I was at work. You know, I was a land surveyor at the time. I was working on a, on a big track out in the country, and I couldn't figure out why I didn't have a satellite signal. When I drove back into town, I remember uh, walking into the office where my boss was, and on the television, there was, I saw the second plane coming in and hitting the second Twin Tower. And I mean, it, I, I thought my boss was watching a movie. I was like, is that a, a movie? I said, what are you watching? And he said, Shallow, we're under attack. And I mean, I just remember having chills all over me. And I mean, it scared me to my core. And I remember thinking, I've got to do something. But I wasn't in the military at the time and I was 27 years old and I didn't even know if I could join the military. I didn't even know what I could do at my age and, and with the things that were going on in my life. You know, I had children already. And so, you know, I went and I, I talked to my wife at the time and I was like, so what are we gonna do? And, and nobody knew, nobody knew what we needed to do. And I just, I got it in my head right then. I said, I've got to join the military. I want to protect my family and I want to protect my country. I was young, I felt like I was bulletproof. Tell me about the day that you were injured. But the area that we were working in was extremely volatile. And when I say that, I mean, I mean it literally. There were things exploding almost every day. And it was an area that I guess you could say was um, <laughs> really heavy metal because all the roads were literally named after heavy metal bands like Metallica, Megadeth. My Humvee was the third truck in the convoy. We got called to investigate a possible IED. It's an improvised explosive device. And that means it can literally be anything it could be a water bottle or a soda can on the side of the road filled with C4 or explosive material, or it could be a bomb buried under the dirt. And then when you run over it, it goes up. We were on Route Metallica. The bomb went off literally right underneath my vehicle. It lifted my vehicle in the air, and when it came back down, it blew three of the four Humvee doors off. It blew the entire top of the truck off like a tin can, basically. And the really sad part is, I lost three friends that day. Me and my driver were the only two that survived out of a crew of five. I lost my gunner and my two dismounts. I don't know how either one of us survived. We were both in the front seat. The IED went up right behind his seat. 700 pounds of explosives. That's a bomb bigger than the three of us. It put me in about a three year recovery process. But yes, I've got a few missing fingers. Clearly I'm missing my ears. 
I got injured in 2007, so about 14 plus years. 14 years of recovery. And in fact, I'm about to have another surgery. So I've had over 80 surgeries at this point. But when I say three years of recovery, I had three years of pretty much my job was to go back and forth to the hospital every day. There were some veterans that, I mean, they've had a hundred or more surgeries. What does the United States mean to you? Like when you look at this flag, what do you see? I see one of the freest countries in the world. I feel very privileged to be an American citizen. Our nation has set the standard across the globe time and time again. We've been in just about every campaign in some form or another to help other countries when they needed it. I wanted to be a soldier my entire life. I came from a family of veterans, in fact, you know, just like you, right? Your grandfather was in the military? Grandfather was in the Army before the U.S. Air Force was founded. They had him join because he was very good with mechanics and engineer for the planes. World War II through Vietnam. Man, that is so inspiring. And I want to say thank you for your family service. It was your grandfather and your family that helped, I guess you could say, allow America to welcome me home properly. Now, now this question's for you, Glenn. What's it like having a dad who served and protected this country? He can get sick very easily because his burn wounds, it stops him from being able to naturally cool off. I was born while he was still recovering and I grew up knowing him like this. I, didn't, I never knew him any other way and I didn't know he was any other way. So really he was just a guy with no hair, a weird looking skin, so yeah. So what can you tell me about your book, Steel Will? Like, what does that mean to you? Well, it was actually really hard to write it because I really had to dig deep to relive how I felt, you know, be very descriptive about not just my military service, but that day. I had to be very descriptive about losing my friends. I had to be very descriptive about my recovery. And something that I share in the book that I really wanted everybody to know is that faith can get you through your darkest days. I leaned on my faith heavily, and I had a lot of dark days in the beginning, especially knowing that I lost three people that were serving right beside me. These were my friends. I mean, I prayed a lot. Would you still join the military again, knowing that this would happen? Absolutely. I'm very honored to wear this uniform. It's a privilege. Being an American citizen, people should be proud. People should be proud of that flag every time they see it. Thank you for fighting for America. My pleasure, son. Thank you, America, for watching our heroes' stories and for hearing from people like Staff Sergeant Shiloh Harris, who inspire us so much. We need you, America, to go to helpingahero.org and nominate a severely injured service member or veteran that is in need of an adaptive home. Helpingahero.org builds homes for our most severely wounded warriors. And today, Helping a Hero has joined Johnny Morris from Bass Pro Shops in the 100 Homes Challenge. And we invite you, America, to nominate a hero. Nominate a wounded warrior in need of adaptive housing who was injured in the post 9-11 global war on terror. We're counting on you. We need you, America, to go to helpingahero.org and nominate a hero today.